As I mentioned a while ago, Facebook continues to face legal headwinds in Kenya. This week, a Kenyan judge temporarily blocked the mass redundancy of some 260 Facebook comment content moderators. The court in Kenya prevented the social media platform from terminating the contracts at the end of March, pending a judgment on the legality of that move. But this comes just days after yet another tech giant, Amazon, announced it would cut another 9,000 jobs. Numerous tech firms have cut thousands of jobs in recent months after pandemic-led hiring sprees essentially left them a bit overstaffed. Let's dig a little deeper into the details of this story. We're now joined by Nikolai Eddy, the Chief Operating Officer for Nala Money. Um, Nikolai, good to see you. So let's start with a broad picture here. Between them, Amazon, Meta, they're firing about 51,000 people. But can you give us a sense of the, the broader macro factors that may have driven these firms to make such deep cuts? Yes, sure. Thank you so much for having me on. It's, uh, it's great to be here. Um, I think to really understand what's happening today, you know, in the tech ecosystem really across the US uh, and other parts of Europe and across the globe, you have to understand, you know, what happened during the pandemic, what happened in uh, 2020, 2021. Um, and we saw during that time consumer behavior change in a very meaningful way, you know, a rush to digital, to, um, uh, you know, methods of uh, acquiring goods, be it, you know, through Amazon, getting groceries, delivering packages, et cetera, uh, and an increased use, of course, of, of of, uh, um, you know, entertainment products. And I think what we're seeing now is more a normalization um, as COVID starts to, you know, become less prominent uh, and, and um, you know, playing uh, a role in everyday life. So I think what we're starting to see is really a normalization um, of pre-pandemic levels. If we look today, though, at a few things, um, you know, including unemployment rates, we still continue to see extremely strong, um, you know, employment statistics. I think February was reported in at 3.6%, um, which is, you know, remains uh, at, you know, historic all-time lows. So uh, the economy still continues to, to, to do quite well. Um, I think, you know, as you rightfully mentioned, the tech sector has been hit quite, uh, quite hard, as well as, you know, that's trickled then down to, um, you know, the startup ecosystem as well, which we've seen, you know, across the Bay Area, startups cutting jobs, but also just, um, you know, not being so quick to, to, uh, to, to hire. Indeed, and I'm sure we'll come back to the, to the tech sector with respect to Africa in a bit. But is this perhaps also a story around, you know, the era of cheap money? Because, you know, at a time when it's, it's relatively cheap to raise cash, uh, you can go into the market, your Amazon, your Apple, your Facebook, uh, sorry, Meta, as it's more commonly known now, and you can raise cash at less than 2%. I mean, you can afford, quote unquote, to essentially go on these hiring sprees. But as the macro environment tightens up and that cheap capital starts to dry up, it becomes problematic to keep all these people on payroll. Without a doubt, I mean that that certainly plays a role. Um, you know, we see, uh, you know, when it's when it's cheap to borrow, um, you know, it's very it's it's a no brainer to you know further double down on your operations and continue to grow your business. Um, and so I think you know absolutely, uh, you know, the rise of of uh, interest rates, you know, making it more expensive to to borrow um, has just had everybody sort of uh, um, you know ponder: Do we need to actually continue to grow at this scale? Do we need to um, you know continue to just deploy Deploy that capital, you know, uh, um, you know that we've received, and I think, without a doubt, um, you know, interest rates definitely play a role. Indeed. Okay. So one last question for you. Also, seeing a, a wave of job cuts, right, taking place here on the continent. You've seen firms like uh, Chipper Cash, for example. They essentially are moving off. Uh, they're moving to lay off 12.5 percent of their staff. Uh, firms like Sendy, which are in the logistics space, they're cutting services outside their core offering. So they're focusing only on B2B logistics. Uh, logistics for clients like myself that's gone entirely are, are those cuts being focused being driven rather by the same factors we've spoken about the uh, end of that easy money era but also changes in consumer behavior sure yeah i think um you know i'd say the end of the easy money era is plays a big role i think it's slightly different than what's happening um you know in in maybe other sectors uh, you know, in this case, it's really the VC firms who aren't, um, you know, just deploying as extremely quickly. They're actually taking time to do proper due diligence. Um, and as a result, uh, you know, we're starting to see, um, you know, a slowdown in terms of how that, uh, that capital is, is, is being deployed. And without a doubt, it's a very tough time to be, um, you know, building a company. I think this is also when, you know, true um, solid companies are built. Uh, and, you know, it's during these sort of these economic downturns when when you start to see, you know, the businesses that really will flourish um, and are here that have a strong sort of foundation um, to be able to, to, to build.
Indeed, almost like what happened in the late 90s with Amazon. Uh, we'll leave it there for the time being. Nikolai Eddy, Chief Operating Officer at Nala Money, thank you very much for your time.